ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas just launched today, and I am mind blown with the different capabilities it can do in writing and coding. You definitely want to check out some of this. And if you are curious about other use cases, things that you want to see, go ahead and drop it in the comment section. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Please like and subscribe to our channel. All right, so I got access to the ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas, which is crazy. Um, I've been watching, yeah, so many different people test out different things that they can do with Canvas. Uh, and Twitter is just blowing up with all the different use cases people uh, have. A few hours earlier, I got this message that OpenAI was rolling out Canvas, which is insane. So you've got this ability to do a lot of really exciting coding updates, but also writing updates. And people have yeah just been testing out all these different things that you can do. And I was going through the introduction information. So it's a new way of working with ChatGPT to write and code. So it's a new interface for working with ChatGPT on writing and coding projects going beyond simple chat. So it actually will open things in a separate window and it was built with GPT 4.0 and can be manually selected in the model picker here when you do yeah, the drop down uh, when you open this from the browser. One of the cool things is that Canvas will open automatically when ChatGPT detects a scenario in which it could be helpful. Uh, and then you could also include things like use Canvas in your prompt uh, to open Canvas and work on an existing project. So some writing shortcuts here are suggesting edits, adjust the length, change reading level, add final polish, add emojis. So you can see here um, just some of the design notes. Uh, there's a really cool kind of user uh, interactive like menu uh, now that's added and then coding in Canvas. Uh, so they've got new coding shortcuts where you could do review code, add logs, add comments. So adds comment to the code to make it easier uh, to understand. Uh, you've got fixed bugs, port to a language. So translate your code into JavaScript. That's really cool. This is, I think, one of the most exciting parts when I read through this. We trained GPT-40 to collaborate as a creative partner. So it's actually able to uh, kind of be like a co-pilot to you to help create uh, together. So they used synthetic data generation techniques like distilling outputs from OpenAI 01 preview, their like thinking kind of model, to post train the model for core behaviors. So it allowed them to rapidly address writing quality and user interactions all without relying on human generated data. So, and I think one of the really exciting things to point out here is Canvas is the first major update to ChatGPT's visual interface since we launched two years ago. So going back, yeah, years ago when I first started making content about ChatGPT, uh, this is the first update since, uh, to that user interface since then. So this is really exciting. Let's go ahead and see what we can do with Canvas. So I said, help me write a um, snake, the code for a basic snake game. So I said, help me write code for a simple HTML snake game. And this is what it put in here. Now, there's an immediate difference that you notice from like the typical chat GPT. So um, let me actually open up here in the desktop app. So I've got uh, this here, I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I will paste it here just so you can kind of see the difference between the two. So uh, in like the typical interface of ChatGPT, this is actually how um, it's writing the code and yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I think we're used to seeing that. But now here in Canvas, it's actually writing everything and I can go in and I can make edits to this. Now, one of the cool things that you notice as soon as like I add in things here, I can highlight this and I can ask ChatGPT and say, is this necessary or needed? Things like that. 
and it goes through and edits it <laughs> based on you know, what I highlight and ask it to change. So very, very cool. So um, let's go ahead and copy this. And I'm gonna open up a new window. So I have my code editor here. I'm gonna save this as Snake on my desktop and let's run it and uh, see what we get here. So I've got I've got it a fully functioning snake game just by uh, typing in like a few uh, lines of words uh, this uh, this snake game. Uh, so let me refresh. So you can see I'm using my uh, arrow keys on my uh, keyboard here. And yeah, the game is working just like it's supposed to. Now if you hit the sides, it tells me game over. But just so you can see a simple coding uh, exercise here. So let's go ahead and create a new chat with Canvas. Let's say, create me an SEO optimized blog post on the top. Let's say top uh, things to do in Orlando, Florida that are not the theme parks. I'll test a little bit of the writing here. So when you do Canvas, it automatically brings it up into this like new window here. So uh, top things to do in Orlando without visiting the theme parks. Looks like it's pulling it here. So Orlando's known for its theme parks, so much more to discover. Hope this blog post captures what you're looking for. So, and then over here, actually when editing, um, so we've got, it looks like 10. Um, let's highlight this. And it looks like we can bold it, italicize it. We've got like some font options and font changes that we can do. Let's act, uh, ask ChatGPT and say, um, give me uh, 20 options and not just 10. So now it's going through and editing this. Wow, this is crazy. Very, very cool. Um, let me test out here. So I can do suggest edits. So when you click on suggest edits, you're asking ChatGPT, and it looks like they're using, I think the uh, GPT-40 pr um, preview to be able to, is that right? Uh, I think they're using 01 preview to kind of think through and what could be done. So consider adding a hook or an interesting fact about Orlando to immediately capture the reader's attention. You could add a specific example of a unique plant or flower found in the gardens. Consider mentioning a popular vendor or spe uh, specific dish. Yeah, really interesting here. Let's hop, see what happens when I click on it. Oh, I can click apply. So it's editing that right now. So I can hit apply for each of these and it goes through uh, and updates this real time. This is, yeah, very, very cool. I like this a lot. So I guess when you want to reject something, you can uh, exit out of that. Okay, let's do adjust the length. Let's come over here and say, um, how many words long is this? So it looks like this document is 1,486 words long. So other options over here, we've got adjust the length. So let's say shorter, shortest, or longer, longest. Let's see what happens when I do longest. So it looks like we, it says it made the text 75% longer. 
expanding existing sections and also adding more activity. So it looks like, yeah, it went up to 25. Let's see now how many words this is. And it looks like they've got also a pause or stop button over here, a cancel, um, not just here in like the chat side of the chat GPT, but also this new window uh, that has come out. And while this is, yeah, coming uh, and analyzing how many words, uh, you can do previous version, kind of going back or an undo, going forward, and then you can copy uh, what was generated here. All right, so the amount of words is 2,368, very cool. So adjusting the length, so you can do suggest edits, adjust the length, uh, let's do reading level. So we can do current reading level, or we could do graduate school, college, high school. So let's do, um, let's make it kindergarten. I'm curious to see what it'll do. You can visit pretty gardens, see fun shows, and do lots of cool activities. Here are some great things to do in Orlando that don't need a ticket to Disney or Universal Studios. Very cool. Did we miss any spots? Let us know. Okay, let's do this to um, graduate level. So Exploring Orlando, Comprehensive Guide Beyond Theme Parks. So internationally renowned for theme parks, yet the city offers a plethora of other enriching activities that warrant exploration. Wow, very, very interesting here. Yeah, I know when I'm creating content or writing, there are a lot of times when I'm trying to write for the audience. So this is really exciting. So uh, I adjusted the text to reflect graduate school reading level, advanced vocabulary, complex sentence structures, and detailed explanations. Um, yeah, really interesting. All right, let's do add final polish. So it looks like you can use all of these handy um, menu options to adjust the different writing style. Uh, the reading level, different edits that might need to be happening. So yeah, this is really going to increase the amount of ability to write content uh, on you know, creating new code, taking existing code and optimizing or approving it uh, even further. So really, really exciting. So added some final polish here to the text. It looks like Looks like it was cut off. Yeah, so you cut off some of the sections from the post. Can you fix it? Yeah, very interesting. I like this kind of from top to bottom like flow. Uh, reminds me of some of the older like CR CRT style monitors. Yeah, it looks like it's still cutting it off. I don't know why it's doing that. Let's do suggest edits. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's do apply here. So very, very interesting. I really like this suggest edits feature. Let's do add emojis. So that's interesting, yeah, that they added in an emoji, adding emojis option to the menu. I guess if you're creating social media copy, um, you know, this is pretty, this would be probably pretty helpful. Yeah, it looks like the emoji choices and placements are getting better. Um, I've noticed when I've like asked ChatGPT to put in emojis in some of my content, it's not been the greatest. <laughs> so this definitely looks like yeah, a leveling uh, level up here. So let's go back to one of my other chats here. And um, we are going to 
ask it to uh, go back to the code and let's see what the options are for coding here. So yeah, again, um, you can come in here, edit it, you can ask ChatGPT different things, but um, the new options here are you can click code review. So when you ask it to do a code review, um, so this is basically, again, similar to the writing one, but it's ask, uh, you ask it to um, uh, suggest different improvements to the code. So consider initializing direction with a default value to prevent undefined. Let's go ahead and apply that. that. Sounds good to me. So yeah, it's interesting because the uh, when you're doing code, it gets rid of those uh, windows for a little bit. Interesting. Okay, board side is hard coded. Consider defining a variable. Let's apply that. Yeah, this is really interesting. It's similar to like if you do programming, it's similar to like pair program uh, pair programming. So yeah, really interesting how this um, setup is. Yeah, really, really interesting. Okay, so now let's do port to language. Uh, keep current. Oh, you could do Python, C++, PHP, JavaScript. Um, let's do Python. Yeah, this is really cool. I'm curious to see if we can like um, run it or do they have like an interpreter here? So yeah, it cannot ex execute the code, um, which is yeah interesting. So let's go check out some of the other options. So let's do, let's port it back to uh, JavaScript. Um, no, actually we want to, uh, let's do change the code back to HTML and JavaScript. So yeah, we're gonna convert it back here. Um, and then yeah, I wanna check out some of the other menu options for the coding side of things. All right, so now we can check fixed bugs. So let's see what it's got. Interesting, so yeah, it's updating some of this here. such as ensuring food does not spawn on the snake's body, optimizing the collision checks. Yeah, interesting, okay. And then we can add logs. So this is really important um, as a like software engineer uh, because you're gonna have um, logs that will print out and you're able to do like better error kind of diagnosing finding bugs. So yeah, that's important. So it's adding the console logs to debug games behavior, key presses, direction changes. Yeah, so that's really cool. Very helpful, yeah, in real world scenarios um, if you're doing a lot of programming on a daily basis. Now adding comments, this is great because it will actually go in and like provide <laughs> comments to what the code is doing. So yeah, you can see here, get the canvas and set up the 2D rendering context define the size of each box cell and the board size. Yeah, really cool. Drawing the snake, drawing the food. Very cool. Very, very cool. Well, yeah, this is just a first glance at um, all the different things that you can do with ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas. So I'm going to keep playing around with this and testing it out. If you have any other use cases or questions, please go ahead and drop it down in the comment section below. I'd love to uh, do it in another upcoming video here on the channel. 
Uh, and as always, if you are not subscribed right now, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and like this video to support me making other awesome videos like this. Uh, and thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to keep moving forward, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.